during the college days, we attended a lot of uh, these business school events. So events at uh, IIM Ahmedabad, events at FMS, events at TAPME, multiple uh, cities we visited and attended a lot of business school events, which were all inter-college. And a lot of these were business plan competitions. Right. And both my friend and I, uh, we kind of won one after the other a lot of these competitions and okay. we got into that groove of starting something got it initially it was just pocket money for us <laughs> right you go to a competition you aim for the first prize you win 15 20 thousand rupees and you are very happy that hey this is this is good pocket money for me but uh, but later on it actually evolved into something bigger because you were constantly interacting with industry people you were constantly interacting with people who were either investors or uh, were donning that hat in some form, who were judging these competitions and then deciding among hundreds of entries that this is the team that has the most potential. So we actually believed that it's not just a paper plan, but it's actually something we can do. Right. And that's how this whole thing came about that by the time it was end of, almost end of our graduation from, um, from the college, we realized that we won like seven, eight competitions. Right. Uh, there's definitely merit to the idea we were sharing because we were sharing the same idea at every competition. Oh, okay. So, and we were winning. So, so we essentially you had a paper plan which you were running through all simulations in all colleges and giving Correct. it a trial run, right? Correct. And it was more early validation. I mean, no customer or no revenue, but mm -hmm. from a market standpoint, it was early validation. And we thought, why not launch it? And what is a better place to launch than just launch uh, from campus? Makes so we sense. launched our first startup on the day of graduation, midnight. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so that's how this whole thing happened. Um, I'll say the jobs that we had, we kind of uh, deferred our joining instead of uh, rejecting those offers. Right. Uh, these were large MNCs. Right. Uh, one was American Express, one was Accenture. Right. Um, so for both of us, these companies were far more uh, understanding in terms of when we asked them to defer our joining. Right. Uh, so that was a fortunate thing for us. Right. And by that time, we had also... Because I don't think a culture like that exists anymore, right? That you're able to so comfortably talk to the MNCs yeah. and tell them that, like, can we defer the yeah. educational thing? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so it's uh, it was just all different things falling into place. Yeah. Plus, I would say I had done a summer with my with my employer, so that obviously had the comfort of reaching out to to my um, reporting manager, talking to him that hey, we worked together for two months and that's why I have secured that offer so can we do this uh, a few months later makes sense so I think that's what uh, helped us start otherwise it would have been tough because um, you need to give your full 100% in the initial days to see whether this actually has any merit or not right and like I've previously mentioned we fast forward from that point 12 years later and here you are launching a new venture Rupify so tell us about that. Like share your experience with that. Sure. So Rubify is uh, my fourth startup. And I think uh, I've learned a lot since those days. The good part about doing a startup after 12 years again is that you carry a lot of baggage from the past. But you know what part of that is useful and what is something that you can just uh, completely throw away. Right. So all of us have our own baggages, right? We all carry our experiences, some good, some bad. That's true. The good thing about starting for, let's say, the second time or the third time, or in my case, the fourth time, uh, is that you know what things you should not be doing. And I think one thing that I have learned is uh, you definitely learn what you should not be doing much faster than <laughs> what you should be doing. Nobody tells you... Uh, what you should not be doing. Everybody tells you, do this, do that. But I think the most important learning as a founder is things that have not worked for you. Right. Because there will always be things that don't work for you. Right. So I think those are critical that we've, uh, that at least I have taken a leaf out of my journey in terms of what not to do right. at Rupify. And I think that has helped. It could be smallest things in terms of how to go about 
reaching out to investors. So it's not that how to reach out, it's more about how not to reach out. Right. Like, <laughs> like whether to send somebody a cold email or not. Mm -hmm. So the knots are the ones that I think we've kind of learned. We uh, really grasp better. the knots. Yeah. Right. The Indian Knot Podcast is available on YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook to receive all updates on the upcoming episodes. Thank you once again.